Escape from Tarkov is a game where information is key. At the same time, the game doesn't really tell you anything, so there has to be a bunch of different resources that every Tarkov player needs. Today, we're going to be diving into the top five resources that you need to know to have success in this game. These are super important, so stick around and enjoy. So the first resource here today is something that is not given to you in the game. And when it is, it's kind of useless. Today, we're going to be talking about maps and you're going to be kind of stuck on any single one of these, especially when you press the map. You actually have to physically own the map to be able to look at the version of the map. And sometimes these maps are pretty bad anyway. So one of the perfect resources that I'm going to recommend here today as number one is going to be Map Genie. Now, Map Genie is amazing. I'm going to link all of these down in the description below. But Map Genie is amazing because it gives you different options here for learning each map. Now, I know Factory Expansion is about to come out, so the Map Genie map is going to be a little bit outdated. But if you click on Woods, let's say you need to go to Woods, it's going to immediately load the map and it's a really high definition map. You can simply just turn off everything that you need. An example would be as a new player, you have to learn Woods. So what I would do is I would go ahead and turn off anything that you want to do and bam, you can see the extracts, ammo boxes, crates and hidden caches. You can actually just turn it on to caches alone and do one of those runs. By the way, guys, if you do want to know where all the caches are, I do have a separate video dedicated to this. Uh, all of these little stashes you can see along here running from one to one actually just equals just really good money and is a really good way of how I make so much money in the early wipe. So this next resource is one of the most important things to choose in Tarkov and some of the videos that I've done recently talk about armor testing and how important that is, you know, shooting different armors and which one stops certain amount of rounds. If you guys want to see that a little bit more in depth, once again, I have another video dedicated to that. But one thing you should always realize is there are reasons to choose armors over others. So if you're unsure, here's another resource that's going to help you out. Let's say you had to choose between a Karasa and a 6B13 Assault Armor. One is level 3 on the left being the Karasa and the right is level 4. The difference is though the material type, one being combined materials and the other one being ceramic. Now, if we look at the maximum durability of both, the left on the Karasa is 70 and the right is 47. But what if I told you both of these numbers that they show are actually not what it really is effectively because of its material type? That's where this beautiful resource called the Armor Sheet comes in. Now, I'm going to be linking two in the description down below. One is a little bit easier to read and is honestly done really well by a lad named Bishox. The other one is a little bit more in depth and what this one gives you is pretty sick. Now, the first thing we're going to be looking at Karasa, because this one right here is the one we were talking about. Now, immediately you can see that this column right here, if we look, actually has 70 max durability. But because it's combined materials, the armor is effectively 140 effective durability. Now, if we look at that same armor that we were talking about earlier, that level four armor, if we go down and then find it here, it's going to say 47 max durability, but because it's ceramic, its effective durability is actually only 59. It's important to know that certain materials actually are cheaper to repair. So an example would be things like steel are actually going to be a really nice material type because they're going to not cost you a lot and they're going to have good repairability. Things like ultra high weight polyethylene, which is things that are made out of 6B13M killer armor, or things like the Tactec are actually incredibly great armors. I'm going to be doing a video more specifically talking about this. So this was just a quick show of this graph. As always, though, the link for it will be featured down below. Now, knowing what tasks to do in which order is one of the hardest things to choose as a new player. You become inundated between what quests you really need to do and which ones don't even lead to the Kappa container. If you're not sure, the Kappa container is one of the largest containers that you can earn in Tarkov where you can put your loot in and when you die, you get to keep it. Now, not every task in the game actually requires you to complete it to gain Kappa. So that's where this next resource comes in. This resource is actually called Tarkov Tracker. And Tarkov Tracker is one of the most OP resources ever, period, and I would definitely recommend using it. Now, obviously, you can sign in, but the best thing about Tarkov Tracker is it tells you how many quests you need to do for each trader at the top here, and it also tells you with the white bar which ones are not completed. And then after you complete them, 
you can mark them off and it will show up as blue. It also tells you on the panel here below about which map you need to run for each quest, as well as the fact that it slowly tells you how you need to do 173 Kappa specific quests or 203 in general. It can show you found and raid items that you're going to need, quest XP and everything in between. The best thing about Tarkov Tracker is the fact that it has your needed items. If you click on the left hand side here, you can go to the needed items and you can immediately see that I'm going to need a Toz found in raid. Now, one of the best things about Tarkov Tracker is that I could just simply just press this plus sign here and now I have one out of one for the Toz bolt. So now I know that I don't need another Toz because I've got one. So it allows me to keep track of what I have and what I don't. And if you're not sure, the best thing about this is that it's going to be two hyperlinks on each item that will lead you to the wiki, which we'll get into in a second. Another great thing is that you've got the hideout as well. It tells you everything that you're going to need for each hideout upgrade. And after you press build, if there is a timer, the timer will start on Tarkov Tracker and then you can see when it's unlocked and then it will show the next upgrade and then what you need. It's actually super sick. Another really good thing about Tarkov Tracker is this last one here on the left here, and that is skills. Now these skills are really good because it tells you that you don't need Charisma level 10 for Kappa, but it tells you all of the other skills that you're gonna need along the way. An example would be, you're gonna need level three Sniper, and you're gonna need eight before Tarkov Shooter part four, and so on and so forth. So if you're not sure what skills you need for quest, this tells you as well. On top of that, if you use the tab at the top here to go to Hideout, It'll tell you if you need specific skills for your hideout. So when you get to vents, you may need vitality for your workbench to be upgraded or your med station and so on and so forth. So these last two resources are one and the same, but they're both just as important as each other. So moving away from Tarkov Tracker, we can actually use the beautiful resource that we're about to talk about. If you actually press this icon right here, it immediately takes you to every item that you need to know on the wiki. Now the wiki is amazing for a few particular reasons and you're like, well, Vox already know about the wiki. What are you going to tell me about this that I don't know? Well, there are actually two things on the wiki that I would recommend you bookmark right there now. Now the first one is going to be going to the right here and typing in ballistics. As soon as you go to ballistics, I want you to bookmark this page right now. This is your ammo chart. It tells you everything you need to know about ammo and ammo is one of the most important decisions that you need to make in Tarkov period. Having the right ammo is a difference between life and death and knowing how much damage, penetration and armor damage that your ammo has is a good thing. You can see by some of these different ammos that let's say an example would be you want to run the 545 gun and your early off will go down to 545 on the left here and we're going to be starting off with a bunch of these ammos which I'm going to highlight which are pretty damn trash. The first thing we notice about all the ammos you start with is that the penetration values are pretty bad. So that 545 by 39 PP is actually going to be the best here because it has 30 pen. That means 545 BP, which comes with the gun in the mag, and then BT, which can be found everywhere on the map, are actually going to give you way more consistent results, especially in the level three to four armor. You're going to pen on level three in the first hit and then pen four quite successfully after the second or third. Now, obviously it gets a lot better with 545 BS and then a Golnik, but these are things you need to know. So when choosing the right ammo, make sure you bookmark this, check the ammo that you're gonna run and a general rule of thumb, and a general rule of thumb is the higher the penetration value, the better the round. Moving away from the ballistics chart and to the last one here today that I would recommend bookmarking, we're gonna type in the words hideout. Now this is honestly just too damn good to go past. The Tarkov Hideout Wiki is amazing because it tells you everything you're ever going to need about anything, as well as the fact that it has this amazing chart right here, which I keep up at any time in the wipe, and that is items to keep. I would keep this on your second monitor or your third monitor. This is just too damn good. You're going to see all the items you're going to need for whether it's Hideout or your quests. Now, this one here specifically is for Hideout only, and you can just see the amount of things you're going to need for hideout level two endurance level two strength level three vitality all of the skills all of the money the trader levels all of the items that you're going to need to finish your hideout as well which is really really good because a lot of the time you don't know if you're keeping too much of one item this will tell you that hey by the way you need 26 hoses to upgrade your hideout so you know if you find a corrugated hose you'd be like i already have a couple of those 
Well, grab more because you're going to need 26, which is just kind of insane. As well as the fact that if we go back from the hideout, our items to keep, there are plenty of other little resources here, like the hideout flow chart, which is kind of cool. I checked this one out a little bit earlier. It can tell you like what unlocks what and what you need for it. I mean, it's quite hard to read, but if you zoom in, it's pretty good as well. There's plenty of different resources like this on the wiki. Uh, and the last one here, which I throw in as a bonus, if you type in the word quests, you can actually go to your quest items here and you're going to see a little item at the top here that says quest items requirements. I would keep this up on one of your monitors so you know that, hey, I need a certain amount of dog tags or a found and raid lead X or this or that. So this is really important to keep track of what you need and make sure you're not cluttering your stash with what you don't. Hey guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm gonna be working on a lot more videos like this for beginners, trying to make them as fast and to the point as possible. I thought I'd throw out some really amazing resources that I've been using for years that I thought you guys would appreciate too. If this video helped you, let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see next. I really appreciate you guys watching to the very end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.